Good afternoon, my friends. This is the Grim Flare, and I hope you're all doing very well today. And I think you know why we're here. We are playing, that's right, some more modern Golgari midrange with a brand new Modern Horizons tech for you. And we're playing a list that is 74 out of 75 uh, exact match to one of the lists in my recent video uh, called Three Modern Horizons BG Rock List or something like that. I'll link to it in the description below. It's the third one and what I called the most intriguing one at the time. I called it Golgari Unearth, and I think it is the most intriguing because we're not only incorporating every piece of new tech that I think is pretty much expected to be good, so that would be Nurturing Peatland times two, Unearth times two, Plague Engineer times one, and Collector Oof times one, we are also doing some things to that are slightly off the beaten path in a deck like this. Like we're only uh, we're playing two main deck collective brutality. Some have said this is not as good as it used to be. Maybe they're right, but it is good with unearth. Another card that's good with unearth is a one of grim flare, and that is definitely um, very playable tech in its own right. So we're not building around unearth all that much, but we are kind of uh, including some some borderline decisions between, you know, Flare and a Kalidus, for example, or Flare and the third Scavenging Ooze. We lean toward the Flare for the purposes on, of Unearth. We'll see how it works out, but I basically, all of these things are reasonable decisions in their own right, and my hope is that we'll, it will all come together very well. Um, the other thing I'll point out is we are giving Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth a shot, because between Grim Flayer and two copies of Abrupt Decay instead of just one, we have a lot more incentive to be casting BG spells on turn two. So for that reason, our mana base is very, very, very consistent with color production. We're only playing three colorless lands and only one treetop village as well. Um, Nurturing Peatland, of course, fixes our mana and draws us to more gas at the expense of our life. And, uh, yeah, basically that's what we're doing. So the only change between this list that we're playing today and the one in the video is that I brought back the Damnation. Uh, it was either this or EE, -E, and Engineered Explosives is, of course, very good, but we're going to try playing without it. And, uh, you know, for taking care of the smaller stuff, Plague Engineer covers that to a certain degree. Abrupt Decay, even Collective Brutality can do some duty uh, on that front, so obviously EE -E is a really nice card to have, but at the end of the day I decided it was a little irresponsible to leave home without a true sweeper effect, and that would be Damnation. So, first time ever playing with these cards, and first time ever playing a Modern League on this new interface. Uh, this is Modern League, yeah. Looks like this is what we're supposed to be doing. Alright, let's do it. Play League match. All right, here we go. Here we go. So, yeah, exciting. Exciting to be uh, testing out the new technology. And I am going right in the deep end with this, you know, a little more off the beaten path on Earth build. When I initially designed my three lists, I kind of thought the first one I would debut was the stock one, the one closest to the stock list, the one that kind of incorporates the new tech while rocking the boat as little as possible. But... Changed my mind, and we're playing this uh, this slightly more experimental list to begin our new journey to the horizon. So let's hope we get there. Um, well, hand looks fine to me. Opponent's going to mulligan. All to the better. We will keep. Double forest is, needless to say, a little awkward. Holy moly, the opponent's going all the way down to four. It's gotta be Tron or Dredge or Neoform or something like that. Um, if it's Dredge, I might not even cast my Thoughtseize on turn one. So let's see if we can tell what they're playing based on their land. It is probably Dredge, so I think I'm actually not supposed to Thoughtseize here. Uh, Thoughtseize in general against Dredge is pretty good um, in certain situations, especially with an Ooze to follow it up. But here, uh, with the dredge player mulling so low, it's very likely they don't have a good target or that it does more harm than good to cast it. So, um, Blooming Marsh is a fine draw. Yeah, we're just going to play out the Scoos. And if it's dredge and if they don't have an answer, you know, who knows, maybe they just scoop now. Um, 
Or maybe it's not dredge at all. It could be a different deck that just was unlucky to mulligan to oblivion. But we will see. The ni really nice thing here is even if they have an out to it, we can unearth it. And Skuz is a really tough card for them to beat when they maul this low and they're taking a while to get anything going. All right, Copper Lion Gorge shows us that this is indeed um, Dredge. So now I think we are going to Thought Seize now that we have a couple of Skuz activations to clean up after ourselves. All right, so, ooh, opponent's got a blast zone. That's actually a big problem. Um, I mean, again, we can unearth and, and all that, but it is still a problem. So, they cannot hard cast Bloodgast yet. They can put some stuff in the yard with Conflagrate, so maybe we just take... I'll well, just take the Conflagrate and eat it. And if the opponent casts a life from the loam, we can even, you know, compete over that land if we want to. But they can put a charge counter on Blast Zone here on the end step, so they're certainly just going to go on the Blast Zone plan. Again, Unearth here is going to be good. All right, Nurturing Peatland, sure. Pretty happy to crack that right now. Tarmogoyf, okay. Just gotta be patient here. Can't play the Goyf into Blast Zone, obviously. Ooh, another land. It's interesting, because then the opponent can potentially buy back the Blast Zone at some point with Life from the Loam, and that would be an issue, but... Inquisition. Alright, I like that draw. I like that draw just fine. We'll start with that. Opponent might Blast Zone in response, so that they think whatever... Okay, they don't. Just another land. Alright. Yeah, we're just going to take life from the loam, eat it. Alright, so in response, we're going to eat both of their lands. Probably would have been better to just run out forest there, actually, so we don't have to fetch and shot to do this, but shouldn't matter. Opponents just got Bloodgast, Copper Lion Gorge, and a totally empty graveyard. We've got Unearth to buy back Skoos. <clears throat> And we've got Tarmogoyf as well. So let's unearth. Let's play a Goyf. And let's pass, holding up our Skuz activation. At end step, we can push the uh, Bloodgast and then eat it if we're so inclined. Uh, 
Another one. You got it. I think we should. All right, opponent scoops to that, so a little too much value for them to fight through. Um, of course, we still had more more stuff in hand to come, but yeah, I mean, they mull to oblivion, we go on the scoos plan. They answer the scoos, and before on Earth, we might have been in trouble there, or at least it would have been an interesting progression to see if they could put a put some actual dredging together before our Tarmogoyfs uh, got there, but... On Earth, man, on Earth. Well, that's a really promising debut from our new tech, so good stuff. Now, against Dredge, uh, Kalidus, Spellbomb, Spellbomb, Cage, Extraction, Extraction. I kind of like Plague Engineer, as you might have seen in my Patreon exclusive scouting report. It does seem actually pretty decent against Dredge, and then... Um, how we rate Fatal Push and Liliana the Last Hope will be interesting to see relative to our um, relative to our main deck options, but six definite awesome cards here. And four definite outs, Liliana the Veil is the clear out. Um, otherwise... I guess Unearth is really good, um, to be honest. It's always... I'm actually never fully sure whether it's better to have trophies or decays, because trophy, of course, ramping them is not ideal. But you can attack their land base. That can become relevant against the life from the loam loops. But I think we can disrupt those loops well enough that I'm just going to cut trophies. And that puts us at 60. Um, I, I'm going to play with Plague Engineer and basically just see how it goes, but I honestly think it's going to be really, really fine. Uh, let's cut a Decay. Maybe just cut both Decays. Fatal Push is probably just better. Play with our Liliana the Last Hope. That seems fine. We could cut a Bob actually on the draw. But our curve is so low now. Our curve is so low. Maybe it's not that different than it used to be, but I think Bob is fine in this matchup. There's a lot of differing opinions in terms of how to sideboard against Dredge. Um, one argument is that Bob is a liability and doesn't clock that well. The other is that he helps you find your hate. Okay. Um, this hand is really good on the play. On the draw, I think we have to mull it. It's got no graveyard hate. If we were on the play, I'd keep this. Let's mull. We've got a ton of graveyard hate. All right, this isn't really any better. Um, don't really want to go to five, throw away two functional hands, so I guess we're going to keep and Maybe they are just on a cathartic reunion hand. That's kind of our hope here. If not, we're probably just going to lose, but... Okay, turn one, street corn or looting was bad, and... It was the Shriek Horn, so maybe we can slow them down with an Inquisition, but they do have their Enabler already down, and this is why casting Discard can be risky. Uh, this is awful. This is awful. We're probably just dead. I think we have to put the Ghast in the yard. We don't want to give them a Dredge effect, but needless to say, that's, <laughs> that's pretty horrendous. Creeping Chill. They've got Leyline of the Void. Very interesting to note. Wonder if that makes us want to scale back on Unearth just a tad. Maybe we'll just see what the rest of their deck is looking like before we decide on that. But, you know, turn zero Leyline is pretty decent against us. Gorge into Loam, getting back the Ghast, and we get an Unearth. Not very good. Yep, we're not really accomplishing anything here at the moment, so... Could be that it was correct to mulligan to 5 in search of graveyard hate, but...
Again, throwing back two really functional hands. Especially when some of our stuff on the draw is not quick enough anyway. I don't know. So the opponent's going off moderately here. They haven't really gone too, too crazy, but they do have a Stinkweed Imp in the graveyard now, and that's a big problem for us. Alright, need to draw Nile Spellbomb. We just draw another land. Pretty bad. Uh, pretty bad, pretty bad. Let's play a tracker, I guess. So in a lot of matchups, of course, you don't want to run the tracker out without the guaranteed value of a land to follow her up, but here... A, that doesn't ring as true as it does in most matchups, and B, we don't have another choice. Like, we're just... Thought Seize doesn't look like it's going to be good. Fatal Push is just an exercise in futility until we find, again, like a Nile spell bomb to pair with it. So, you know, this still could be okay if we top deck a spell bomb. We can go land, make a clue, push something... Spell bomb it all away and try to uh, try to take it from there. Collective brutality. All right. Well, that's not the greatest. I think once again we just kind of have to keep digging. Another land, another land, another land. So... I don't think we're interested in doing much here. We're just going to sit back and block and possibly just cycle on Earth on the end step, depending on what they do. Just on the desperate dig for graveyard interaction. I mean, obviously we have so much of it in the deck, it's feels a little bit unlucky to not really see any of it, but then again, we got some good luck game one. Main deck scoos against an opponent mulling really heavily, so that's, that's magic for you. Okay, we see they have a nature's claim in here as well. Good to know. Double Stinkweed Imp. Yeah, it's basically Spell Bomb or, or Bust. Even that, I mean, at this stage. Our life total is really low, so who knows. But, all right, so if we take the efficient block, we block a ghast, we're going to take six. Sure, I guess that's fine. All right, we'll cycle the unearth and see two new cards, but at this point, ah, there's the spell bomb a little too late, right? A little too late for that. So if we, I mean, or is it? So let's say we, the problem is we have to shock in, so that unwinds the collective brutality life gain. But I was thinking, what if we fatal push one blood ghast? Collective brutality, the other blood ghast are a narc amoeba or something. Then spell bomb it all away. Um. Yeah, again, the fact that we'd have to shock is what really holds that back from being great, but maybe we just don't take our draw with a spell bomb. So, sure, that means we play this tapped to make a clue. And I guess just killing both blood ghasts is fine here. There's also an argument for us just scooping to not show them Nile spell bomb, but I assume they're not going to be terribly surprised by that.
Hmm. Then again, this fetch land complicates matters. Kill your thing, drain you for two. Pick your thought, sees. Hmm. All right, yeah, let's spell bomb now. We can hold up the fatal push. For I guess. Again, I don't think I don't think this matters. Let's just go for it. I think we're just dead. So they get their blood gas back here. So we push one thing. Let's say we push a gas. Or we could push an amalgam now. All right, I think that was the best sequencing we had a, had available to us. And now we're still just dead on board, so make the opponent turn them all sideways, I guess. Again, there is an argument for just scooping, but I guess we made the opponent see the, uh, the blood gas line. So, sure, why not? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we got run over a bit there. You know, we mulliganed. We didn't see any graveyard hate of any kind until this, it was too late. Um, again, I'm I'm not so high on these CMC2 pieces of spot removal unless you rate attacking their land base highly, which I think with the really high density of graveyard hate that we have, I don't. I think everything else here is pretty much just better. It's a little clunky to have so many copies of discard, like two brutality, six uh, one mana discard spells, but those really are an important piece of interaction early game a lot of the time. Um, not always, but they're a very high variance card, but when they're good, they actually can really cripple a dredge player, so... And especially on the play, brutality is fine if they're on a cathartic reunion dependent hand oh man alrighty we just can't uh, can't find grave hate well mulligan okay there's some grave hate opponent keeping 7 is very bad but let's keep this uh, I guess I'm going to bottom on earth in case they have a ley line I'm probably just correct to bottom it anyway I'm going to slow roll that spell bomb a little bit because it's really all we have going for us at the moment. Um, so I don't want to just lose it to a nature's claim, which we saw they do play. Turn one looting. It's tough. So it's... They've got Amalgam and Imp. Yeah, we were going to have to just spell bomb that away next turn. Uh, another land. No good. No good, my friends. But at least we get rid of a bunch of, uh, we get rid of a really good turn one play for the opponent. I really just drew another forest. Okay. Well, maybe this isn't meant to be. Too many mulligans, too many, yeah, too much flooding. And they have another enabler, of course. So we need more graveyard hate. We draw another land. Okay. Yeah, we, we're still drawing very live, but yeah, they just had a stacked hand. You know, two of the best dredge pieces, uh, dredge, actual dredge cards, two prized amalgams, two enablers, keeping seven. It's, it's something that we can beat, and now they get a blood gas too, so they just have absolutely everything. It's something that we can beat, but, you know, not if we mull to a hand that does nothing. Creeping chill narc amoeba. Oh, boy.
Well, we're getting shellacked by a dredge, my friends. And hey, you know, they gave us the free win game one, but then we're giving them kind of a couple free wins here in games two and three, you know? Unless we find, like, uh, Kalidas off the top or something to really turn the tide. They have Cathartic Reunion, too. I mean, they just had everything. They just had everything. Look at all that. Not that many hits, actually, off of that massive dredge, but still, they've already got enough going on, right? And they've got Stinkweed Imp and Life from the Loam in hand. Ghasts and Amalgams coming back. Nothing we can do about it. We gotta rip a Kalidus and then start finding removal. A land. A land. <laughs> okay. Well. This'll happen from time to time. I'm gonna scoop after my next draw step if it's nothing relevant. Because we're just... Simply not catching up to this. Opponent with a stacked hand. I'm sure something quite nice to follow up. Okay, Life from the Loam, sure. Alright, I think we need uh, Kalidas here, so I'll just thin out on the end step. Surgical Extraction, way too late. Frustrating game, my friends. Frustrating games. Uh, yeah, just kind of a few non-games there. We weren't really under much threat at all game one. And then game two and three, we get so much better post-side. But a couple mulligans, a couple cases of flooding, not enough grave hate. Pretty simple. Pretty simple formula by which we can lose against Dredge, but that is all right. Let's go here to round two. Losing the die roll. Opponent's name is Vile Templar. All right. All right. Duly noted. Thought Seize on Earth is all the action we have, but this is actually a keep because we have so much utility out of our land base. And the opponent's mulling as well, so... That helps. Yep, we've got three redraws in our hand if that's what we need them to be. A uh, lot an unusual position for a deck like ours to be in. Ooh, this hand's pretty bad against Burn, though. It's very painful against Burn. Uh, but Burn mulliganing is, is great for us. I would be just very not optimistic if they'd kept seven. All right, Assassin's Trophy is an okay draw. I think we do need to Thought Seize as bad as that feels. It's worse to let a lot of things like Eidolon resolve or whatever they have. And yeah, it's an Eidolon, so... Uh, letting them have just a double creature progression either way, no matter what we do, I guess we just do still take Eidolon. Just probably the card we, we can't really beat. And right now, they don't have a one mana spell to make their turn really good. Uh-oh, did they draw one, or are they just helixing us? Or did they draw another Eidolon? Oh, they drew a one mana spell... Come on. Come on. 
That is brutal. Lightning bolt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, well, well. So we take seven. They've only got lightning helix in hand. We need a creature to stabilize. Collective Brutality is also very nice. Well, I don't mind if I do, so... Unfortunately, we do have to fetch. But we get a nice, nice, nice one here. Leaving that aside. So, fully escalated. Take your card away. Kill your thing. Drain you for two. And we will pitch, I suppose, a peatland. We could just pitch two peatlands. That might actually be correct. Because next turn we're going to go village trophy. And then unearth. Whatever. Unearth is similar to peatland, I guess, in terms of it cycling, so... Yeah, we're just going to pitch both of our peatlands, I suppose. Alright, that was a really nice draw, and we are rewarded for uh, playing these main deck brutalities as a two of. Against, as, a, uh, as a shield against the expected rise of burn, and that's what we're experiencing here, but do note that they have their own canopy lands as well. That's a big reason we expect the rise. So, uh, they're more likely to draw out of this empty-handed situation than they would otherwise be, right? Alright, Swifty for one. No haste creature and no um, prowess is good news for us. So, just going to trophy that thing away. Opponent probably has a land in hand, a non-canopy land. Yep. They might have another one, even. Alright, so we're far from out of the woods because, you know, we, we don't necessarily have any way to end the game at the moment besides turning the treetop village sideways, which is decent. Eidolon. Okay, well, Liliana the Veil is a pretty decent draw. Alright, so we should be able to uh, ensure that they can't sandbag things in hand anymore, whether they be lands or kind of more reactive spells like Searing Blaze. So that's one of the reasons Liliana's good here. Opponent gets a stomping ground, so Naya Burn confirmed. All right, well, let's cycle away our unearth. Grim Flare. All right, getting the Lily back to two is pretty important, so let's tick up. We're going to pitch the Fatal Push, play the Flare. Opponent just had another land in hand. Uh, still no Delirium, but Alright, we tick up Ooh, opponents flooded badly Unlucky for OP um, We're definitely just firing up here 
Or should we take them off of a color first? Yeah, that's probably correct. Let's take them off of white. Alright, so we bend this Lily to get Delirium, and we bend all three because they're all bad. Um, Lily is, of course, fine in a vacuum, but she's bad right here, and she's good in the graveyard, so Flare is Delirious. We just filtered three bad cards off the top of our deck. That felt great. <laughs> that was a great one. Hey, you know what? So far, that unearth in game one against Dredge was awesome, and the Flare here was awesome against Burn. I mean, obviously, other cards they're replacing are good, too, but... So far, so good for the uh, the new technology. Um, Plague Engineer is also, like, against Dredge. I think it's reasonable for sure. And in our very, very light against Burn list, I think it's just definitely coming in. So the fourth push, Kalidus, Plague Engineer, Triple Fulminator Mage are all fine. We cut all bobs and all thought seizes and need to bring in one more card. None of them are good, but I guess the least bad is either going to be Liliana the Last Hope just to, like, play defense against their creatures and maybe buy back a threat, or Nile Spellbomb as a two-mana cantrip. Um, I think we're going to go with the Liliana, but neither is great. It's kind of a whatever decision. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, hand is great, opponent mulls. We've got the best card in our deck, which is Collective Brutality. We've got the Scavenging Ooze to clean up after it. We've got Unearth to either buy back Scoos or just to cycle. Um, so the hand admittedly is a little slow, especially on the draw. I've got to get out of limited mode, where I'm like, oh, this hand's, you know, quick enough, but... Um, it's so it's not that quick, but obviously a great, great hand, right? Okay, opponent with the turn one Swifty is pretty nice. Uh, we draw a forest. Not the best, but again, we're going to aggressively escalate with the Cobru coming up. And in a way, them having a Swift Spear is, is kind of fine for us because it basically ensures that we're going to have a coherent use of Collective Brutality this upcoming turn. Like, there's a creature on field. They're incentivized to pump it right now so they get more damage across. They're incentivized to tap out for other creatures or what, what have you. So, like, this is just why Collective Brutality is so good against Burn because it gets us some, some sort of benefit out of their best start against us, which is basically the same as their best start against anyone, a turn one Swifty or a Goblin Guide. Looks like the opponent's on a one-lander. No? Okay, they just... Interesting. Maybe... Maybe they're playing around Collective Brutality a little bit. That could be, but we have drawn... So many lands that we're definitely just going for it anyway. Triple Escalation. Interesting question of what lands to pitch. I guess pitching a Catacombs is fine. Um, Kind of want double black, kind of want as many green sources as I, as I can get, but Field of Ruin is also relevant against their three-color deck. So maybe? I think I'm actually just going to pitch both Catacombs here. I don't know if that's correct, but... Alright, Lightning Helix, Rift Bolt, Searing Blaze. So if we take the Rift Bolt, we actually kind of force them to crack that land before they do much. 
which is interesting. But maybe we just take... I think we just take the the more direct two for one of Searing Blaze. Then we can play the use. They can spend a spell on it, and then we can buy it back with Unearth. It's going to be great. They got another Swifty. All right, well, that's a good one for them. Are they just going to suspend the bolt now before a discard is involved in, in the game? Yes, they are. Okay. Fatal push. Nice draw. Nice, nice draw. So yeah, we continue on the same plan, but now we also have the ability to just kill the Swifty. If I didn't have Fatal Push, it might be worth considering just simply eating main phase to ensure we gain a life in case they draw like a uh, Skullcrack or something, but... And they're probably incentivized to point something at the Skoos here, or maybe not. Maybe they just try to go everything to face and then outsize the Skoos. Either way, our push is, is nice here. And then we won't even necessarily have to unearth our scoos anytime soon. Okay, they are bolting the scoos. You got it. All right, so we're kind of telegraphing that we have a fatal push because we did not uh, we did not gain a life in response to that. Wow, another swift. Jeez, it's real good. That's really good. All right, well, we push the bigger one, and then we take one. And then we're on the unearth plan, so... Unfortunately, we can't grow the scoos out. Ooh, ooh, interesting. All right, I think I like playing Plague Engineer Naming Human. Seeing all the new tech, my friends. This is pretty nice in this spot, actually. And this also reduces the tension between, you know, if we're unearthing, do we shock in, and shocking doesn't make sense. All right, Human. We name Human because they could also be playing Grim Lavamancer. So... You want to name either human or monk against Swifty, and it might as well be human in case of Lava Man. Plague Engineer. So, hey, you know, we tested the War of the Spark tech for like an entire month without really seeing Ashiok or Liliana's Triumph almost at all. Sure, so they have to Helix here, and then we get to go on the Scoo's plan like crazy. Yep, so this worked out okay for us. Obviously, eating a couple burn spells on with our board is really nice. Okay, Verdant Catacombs. So let us unearth our good friend the Ooze. And I think we're just supposed to gain all the life we can before they uh, find a Skullcrack or something. And does that extend to our own Plague Engineer? Probably not, because we have to fetch... Alright, they just scoop. Okay, fair enough. Okay, good enough for me. I mean... Opponent was still all the way at 20, but I guess they just didn't have uh, faith in their ability to beat us. And 
you know, we did have a lot. We had Field to take them off of a dual land. We had Hissing Quagmire as a monosync. We, of course, have the Ooze. That's just a huge issue for them. So, um, some of you may have been thinking that's a premature scoop, and I suppose technically it was, but that was very clearly the stage of the game where we just start turning the screw, you know, just start taking over. So, the new tech more than pulling its weight there. We're on the draw for the third game in a row. Ah, uh, this hand's fine. We'll keep it. Lots of, uh, lots of our list-specific builds are present here. The Swamp and a Relic? Well, I don't know what that is, but that's very bad, very good against Grimflayer and Tarmogoyf. Alright. Quagmire Pass. Basic Swamp Relic, so it's not even like a new, like, mono-black snow control deck. It's just a Swamp and a Relic, huh? Marsh Flats? Is this like a black-white token? Or, I don't know what this is. Blue-black control maining relic? Who knows? Walking Ballista, for one. What's going on? <laughs> what is going on? Um, I don't know what's going on, but... Collective brutality seems reasonable here. I guess I'm just gonna kill the Ballista and check their hand. It's blue black with relic ballista. They've gotta they've gotta have some instants and sorceries in hand, right? Hard to say how good Field of Ruin is here. I think we can pitch the catacombs. Main deck relic, very annoying. Okay, opponent pings us. And it is a blue-black control deck. Pithing Needle, Collective Brutality of their own, and a Damnation. Um, I think we're going to take the Damnation. I kind of hope they use the Brutality, to, even though they'll take away something from our hand this, uh, with the Brutality. I'm more than happy to just leave them without a kill spell and play the Grim Flare. They don't do that, and we draw Lily of the Veil. Alright, new plan. New plan, we're going on the... Hmm. Interesting. I was actually going to say we're going to go on the Liliana plan, but it's just what to pitch that, that makes that awkward, because normally we want to pitch Trophy, but Trophy against Pithing Needle is really our answer, right? So... Huh. All right, I think I'm just going to play her anyway. Definitely demands an answer for them, and... <sighs> Real tough call here. I'm going to go with Tarmogoyf as the pitch, but... Obviously, we're, we look like we're live to force them to crack a relic at some point. Like crack the relic to dig for answers and then our Tarmogoyf gets probably pretty good against this deck but Blast Zone okay well I'm happy I played Field of Ruin they fetch Tezzeret wow taking down to animate the relic that is a beating Okay, well, we can Thought Seize away the Pithing Needle and Trophy away the Tezzeret, and I guess that's our plan. Then next turn we can Field the Blast Zone and play the Flare. Okay, so we're about even on resources. And uh, yeah, the opponent's on some kind of Tezzerator deck, basically. Don't know exactly what, I guess. Yeah, it's basically 
fine to conceive of it as a blue-black control deck with an artifact sub-theme with this Ballista, the Needle. So Tezzeret can tick up to dig for an artifact, tick down to animate an artifact. Oh, that's permanent. Well, I didn't realize that. Did not realize that was the case. Huh. All right, I mean, I think we're going to take another hit from the Relic. To get our Grim Flare down. This does put us in range of dying to two hits, but we have the Hissing Quagmire as well. And I think playing the land there is correct because we do have uh, Mana Sinks on the field. They've got red in the deck too. Yeah, gotta take the hit. Another relic, an actual relic this time. Dark Confidant, not very good. Let's attack with the flare. I mean, we're not going to win by chumping with it. So let's attack and try to set up a good, uh, good top of the deck here. Sure. All right, Lily of the Veil, Abrupt Decay, those are both pretty good. So I'm going to bin Inquisition. I don't know how, I don't know exactly how good Lily's going to be. But, all right, let's do this. Yeah, I'm not sure about Lily, so let's just bin her. And we'll top the Decay. So, I guess it's safest to just say go here. We can, uh, the, the very safest thing to do is to Decay the Relic. So that means we cantrip with the Peatland. And then, uh... Decay the Relic. Obviously other options were to block with Quagmire, which is what we originally were leaning on, or even to play the Bob to Chump. <sighs> Liliana of their own. That is really good. And a Temple of Deceit. Sure. But, you know, if we stick to our original plan, we can actually answer their whole board here. They're going to get a redraw off the Relic, that's a problem, but... All right, and now that they do get the redraw, like I said, but nothing to be done about that. And assuming they don't have anything good off of it, we can then kill the Liliana with our Quagmire, and then it's uh, kind of back to being even. Yeah, I guess we're running out that land. Might as well do it now. All right, so, uh, you know, Bob, I guess, is fairly dead. You know, it, it might come to a point where it's correct to play him anyway, but 
Obviously a bit of a liability at the life total of 5, with the opponent not particularly close to being dead. Opponent went top with that. What do we do about the Bob? What's the answer to the Bob question? Let's attack and see what they do. Nothing, huh? <sighs> I think we're hold holding on to these cards. Ensnaring Bridge. Okay. That's annoying. And another Temple of Deceit. Alright. Well. Fatal Push, not a very good draw. Definitely glad I didn't play the Bob, at least. Again, we have outs to this stuff, but, well, all the temples. Okay, they top with that, so another land. Another land, not very exciting. Yeah, I can't say that I'm familiar with exactly what the opponent's doing, but... Seems pretty clear what their overall strategy is. I just don't know every card that might be in their deck. Tezzeret the Seeker. Okay. Untap two artifacts or tutor an artifact to the field. X equals one. Relic. Interesting one. We cannot stop flooding sometimes, my friends. And with not a tracker to be seen. Okay, so they just top decked both Tezzerets back to back. I mean, not much, not much to be done about that. Which Bane Orb is going to give them hexproof? All right, so this looks, you know, obviously a lot like uh, some elements of War Prison, but just at the same time has got some structural differences. Tarmogoyf. Right on time, Tarmogoyf. Right on time. But it's a body. We'll play it. Okay, another tutor effect. And that's that. Alrighty. A Tezzeret control deck. So, honestly, this matchup is probably fine for us, but just didn't go very well there. Um, I think they play too many Temples of Deceit and other non-island lands for Choke to be good. But Collector Roof seems good. Collector Roof's going to come in. Um... Grafdigger's Cage is going to shut off some of the Tezzeret effects. Probably enough to, to just say that's good enough. Um, I could see Surgical playing a role here. And otherwise, I don't really know how good much of the rest of this stuff is. Probably not the most appealing. I'm tempted to, like, hedge with a Fatal Push or two still in the deck, though, because they do animate artifacts, and they might play, like, a Psy Master Thopter against us out of the board. I don't know. They've got main deck relics. What do we think about cutting, like, Unearth? I think that's probably correct. They might not play that much removal anyway. 
So let's cut the unearth, bring in these, at least one surgical, maybe two. Probably want to just kind of make minimal changes. We'll cut at least one fatal push. Is there anything else we really don't like? Collective Brutality might be a little medium. Again, we didn't see the, the card were itself, so... Then again, we saw Brutality and Damnation on the other side, didn't we? What if we just hedge? We're just going to hedge. We're going to play, like... Yeah, we're going to play like this. I think a couple extractions is, is pretty fine. Um, oh, well, we're at 59 cards. Um, all right, let's just bring back a Collective Brutality. Yeah, we're pretty well hedged with this. I think siding like this is, is pretty much correct. Against a deck where we have kind of imperfect information, but a pretty solid general idea of what they want to be up to. We got Thought Season to oof. It's a keep. You know what, my friends? Whatever happens in this league, we are seeing the new technology. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So we're going to Thought Seize. Oh no, they have Inquisition Thought Seize Relic. That's so good. That's so good because now we can't protect our oof. I'm kind of tempted to take Relic. Yeah, I think we're taking the Relic. Oh boy, that's a tilt. Our poor Oof will not see the light of day. Especially because we cut our Unearth. Oh no. <laughs> that's alright. We're going to have to win game one without the Oof. Or game two here without the Oof. And then we will hopefully see him again in game three. Or, you know, now that we took away the Relic, maybe they don't necessarily have to take the Oof, but I imagine they probably will. Now they take the Scoos? Wow. I mean, they have a Blast Zone, too, but hey, we got Field of Ruin, so... Yeah, I mean, I took the Relic because I just assumed the Oof was getting taken here. And maybe they would have taken the Oof had we taken away Inquisition. So, like, they we take Inquisition, they turn one Thought Seize, then maybe they're priced into the Oof. Maybe they just drew a kill spell for him. No, nope, here's Thoughtseize. Okay, it's oof time. Guess we'll run out our Catacombs, because it's one of the two they know about. It gives us the option to just thin out on our end step, and maybe they just forget about our Field of Ruin. They play the Blast Zone out and do it. I don't know. <laughs> Might as well not remind them about it, right? Okay, they're playing the Blast Zone. They've gotten Ensnaring Bridge. Sure. And our Flood is pretty bad. And we're going to hit the zone before they even get to untap. Actually, there's no reason to. We can maybe force them to sink mana into it. We're also bluffing this way. Might just have, like, another Tezzeret or something, but... They sure do. They sure, sure do. Pithing Needle. Alright, well, we might as well hit the uh, the zone now, because they could always just name Field with Needle. Also, thin out our Decatad, because our Flood is biblical at the moment. Abrupt Decay. Pretty good draw. Doesn't answer Tezzeret. Which I kind of really want to, but pretty good nonetheless, so. <clears throat> I'm 
the other bridge. Okay. Well, our decay just got a lot worse because the main attraction to it was, of course, removing their one bridge, but... Damnation. Yep. All right. I don't think there's any point decaying before the jar comes down because they just have another bridge in hand. So we got to draw an answer to Tezzeret. Not having the very best of luck today, my friends, are we? They've just got triple ensnaring bridge in hand. Cool. Liliana's a good one. Liliana's a very good one. Makes their bridges better, but we're not attacking right now anyway, are we? It's not a bad spot for a surgical either, but we don't have that. So the problem here is that, like, we kind of have to kill whatever artifact they animate. And then they can just needle the Liliana, so... I mean, the Tezzeret value is insane. Now they have two needles in hand. Sure. Let it resolve. They could name Verdant Catacombs here, too, with one of the needles. I don't care about that at this stage. Okay, Inquisition is uh, decent. Another Tezzeret. Jeez Louise. All right, we got to take the needles and try to make this a Liliana game somehow, but... They finally whiff. All right. It's about time. Really. <laughs> Truly about time. Tarmo Goif. Sure. Not very exciting. Doesn't really change anything except makes it so they can't really aggro the Lily off the field that easily. Of course, the ensnaring bridge kind of puts a stop to that. Anyway, to some degree. I mean, they can obviously sequence around that. They get a spyglass, eh? They got a relic. They just got it all. Just got it all. Okay, another Inquisition. Alright, we're going to pivot to making it an ensnaring bridge game, because now that they got the spyglass, or making it like a creature game, we can maybe try to get this last bridge off the field. Between their million needle effects and the ability to uh, attack the Liliana under certain circumstances, I don't know if it's realistic to make it a Liliana game any longer. All right, uh, what am I missing here? I mean, the relic, obviously. They can just crack. Um, I guess that's that's all I'm missing, and I'm not really missing it. Yeah, let's make him do it. Okay. I 
Academy Ruins. Another very annoying card. We draw a land. Okay. Don't know if we can even really beat this anymore, guys. Not with the Academy Ruins to buy back uh, if we do manage to decay. Just let this happen and see what our draw step yields. Tarmogoyf. Well... Might as well play this out. Do we like attacking the Tezzeret? Probably. So here we might need to just decay during beginning of combat, so we don't... So they have to regen and, and tap and not attack with one of them. But, again, I think this game was lost maybe all the way back when they hit Tezzeret. When they top decked a turn 4 Tezzeret. It's probably when we really lost the game and then when we flooded subsequently. So they don't really have free attacks anymore, except insofar as they can, like, suicide things into us and then buy them back with Academy Ruins, which is semi-free. <clears throat> it's a shame, because I think most matchups like this are totally fine for us, but we didn't have the right stuff against their stuff today, and they've... You know, the, the elements that differ make this deck we're seeing differ from War Prison are all very good against us. The Damnation, the uh, Tezzerets in heavy numbers, things like that. It just, that stuff just kind of dumpsters us relative to what we're normally seeing out of a War Prison deck. Alright. Brutality finishes off. Goyf drains us for two, and we draw Bob. Good game, good game. <clears throat> Not my not my very favorite matchup to have seen. Just didn't that just felt a lot worse than than normal were prison. I hope that doesn't catch on. Gotta imagine a lot of that stuff is just kind of a little dirtily, a little too value oriented against the broad meta. But I don't know. I think were prison has it spiked and then maybe it's been taking a nosedive lately relative to how it was a few months ago. So maybe maybe they're reinventing themselves. Maybe that's a little bit more of how they they're looking these days I don't know but that was a rough one and on we go finally winning a die roll here in round four and an unplayable hand mulligan all right yeah, it's okay it's an okay six we're gonna keep it for sure but not really gonna be happy about it Opponent will mull as well. Nice. We are having the opponents take a decent number of game one mulligans, so we have that going for us. That's kind of been the silver lining in a league that hasn't been going all that well so far. Opponent will scry to the top. Keep that in mind as we resolve our thoughtsies. And Hazaret the Fervent Assassin's Trophy? Blood Crypt, Blood Crypt, Black Cleave Cliffs, Wooded Foothills. I guess this is Jund, main decking a Hazaret. Uh, we definitely, I think, just have to take Hazaret. Very, very good card against us. Um, there are, we do have outs to it if we can, you know, edict it specifically with Liliana. That's obviously our best one, but <clears throat> I'm 
more lands is not exactly welcome here. Uh, the opponent's pretty light on action too, however they definitely topped some kind of action with their scry, whereas we had to bottom and just find more lands after the bottoming. Ruination Rioter. 2-2, two, two, when it dies, you may have it deal damage to any target equal to the number of land cards in your graveyard. Well, all right then. So this looks more like a, some kind of a Jund lands deck, like Loam or, or Value, you know, some kind of something to do with that. Um, more Another land is just an awful draw, and Field of Ruin seems particularly bad against this deck that seems to want lands in its graveyard, right? But we'll just pass, see if the opponent's got a main phase play, otherwise I'm not sure how aggressive their deck is, how important it is to decay this before it hits us. Okay. Alright. I guess we're just decaying now. They still, they still get to do two to us instead of one, but... Clearly, that's their plan, is to just fill up the graveyard with lands and do damage that way. Um, among other things, I'm sure. So, there we go. Okay, opponent's got Crypt, Trophy, two unknowns. Let's draw a little action. Scavenging Ooze seems good. So, I think what I like doing here is... Fetching a forest. We can't really play around them having an end step bolt, so we're just going to play the Scoos and pass, and then maybe upkeep, eat the Rioter and the Hazaret. I think growing it out of bolt range is the first order of business, and then from there we'll start eating the lands if we, if we can. Of course, they have the trophy for it, but... You know, so maybe... Maybe because we know this thing's getting trophied anyway. Maybe we just are supposed to eat the lands. I have no idea. You know, this is clearly a new deck. Abrupt decay. All right, I'm going to make the uh, judgment call of eating the lands. rather than gaining two life off of the creatures. They could play some, you know, recursion-style effects for all I know, and then I'll regret this, but I just, you know, this is day two of Modern Horizons being legal. I don't really know what, what's going on, necessarily. <sighs> Another kind of bad draw. I think we're going to attack with the Quagmire. If they want a trophy, that's... Probably fine with me, all things considered. Sure, I mean, that maybe that signifies they have even more removal in hand, which would be tough uh, to, to potentially deal with, but hey. Um... Rather, they use their trophy on a quagmire than on most things I hope to draw. And we're drawing very live, of course. There's that blood crypt. Back to us. All right, let's get a little action. Action. Oh, my God. This has been a pretty miserable amount of flood and we're seeing the nurturing peatlands in places where we're not flooding you know we're like pitching them to collective brutalities and having to tap them for mana and then in situations like this they're nowhere to be found so uh, opponent will loot pitching ghost quarter anger of the gods so this is yeah some kind of like a loam controlly type deck and there's ren in six all right buys back lands all right. Buying back GQ, sure. Replaying it. Then what? Lily of the Veil? Okay, well... Um... Probably need to get rid of her rather than run in six. But we need to find an answer soon anyway. 
to whichever one we don't get, but taking care of Liliana means that us just, like, finding a creature is good, besides Bob. You know, Bob just dies to run in six, but... Um... I think I'm also going to hit their GQ while it's tapped out in case we draw a creature land. I think that's probably correct. Again, even though I know they have ways to buy it back. Just makes them kind of do that instead of doing something else. Alright. Fatal push. Misery! This is misery. <laughs> Planeswalkers are just taking over modern, aren't they? Like this, the Tezzeret deck, the blue-white control. It's bad news for us. That I can tell you. All these planes... Like, planeswalkers in general line up so well against our archetype because we just don't go wide enough to punish them playing that card type. They found another Lily. Why not? Bolt us, discard us out, and we find a lily of our own. Maybe a little late for that, but we'll play her. Alright, so now we need to find an answer to their lily, and we need to find an answer to their Renin 6. So I love these Kamigawa block mountains. A lot of them are so nice. This one's great. Another GQ, sure. All right. Okay, play the Tarmogoyf. It's going to die to the Liliana Edict, but that actually means that we can potentially win the Liliana race to the ultimate. But the opponent's going to ultimate their Renin 6 before we ultimate our Lily. And they can retrace... Um, Decay or Trophy, I suppose, for our Lily. So we still need an answer to Renin 6, and we still need them to Brick. Well, we're not winning the Lily race anymore, because they just bolted her. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Okay. On Earth. Well... Unearth is pretty good. Guess we're going to unearth the Scoos and clear out their graveyard to the best of our ability. Just taking away all of their... So, instants and sorceries have retrace. so let's just take away as many instants and sorceries as we can, I suppose. One, two... Eh, we can't quite get them all, can we? Super annoying. And now they still get to alt their Renin 6 and anger away the ooze. And you know, maybe it was worth eating their two creatures instead and going to four and forcing them to edict, but then they just have the ability to retrace bolts to kill our Liliana, so I don't know what's correct there. And they just drew another bolt, so they don't even have to do anything. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Holy moly. Unbelievable. So they don't, yeah, they don't even have to cash in their run in six. Okay. So they got wooded foothills in hand, but they're playing it instead of holding it for retrace. Hey, we drew another unearth. What a good draw. Hey, guys, you know what? This league is not going that well, but unearth is looking awesome. Unearth is looking amazing, is it not? So... One, two, we can get rid of everything except Raven's Crime. We can eat two creatures, we can eat two instants and sorceries. Nice. And obviously don't care about Raven's Crime any longer. 
And of course, they get to just edict this away with ooze. So it's not even like not even that great for us. But again, it's making their run in six worse. It's giving us the potential to win the Liliana ultimate race. If indeed they are priced into the edict. They play a Raging Ravine. Well, that's really good at pressuring our Lily. Oh boy. All right. And they can just keep buying it back with Ren and Six. Maelstrom Pulse. All right. So who do we pulse? I think we actually might have to pulse Ren and Six because their GQ and Ravine combo is just going to win the game. No matter, you know, against a whole lot of things that we otherwise might be in the game still with. So I guess we're taking care of the Ren and Six, but it feels very bad to leave the Liliana around. But. What can you do? So it looks like we're running into a lot of decks that are good against us, but that it might just be too slow for the meta. Like, people complain about the hyperlinear decks. I think the hyperlinear decks, I understand why people complain about them, but they're kind of the reason our deck is good, because we can actually reasonably contend with them. Whereas a lot of the decks that beat up on us, I don't know if they can. You know, maybe this isn't one, because they have interaction like Raven's Crime and Liliana, but all right, I'm... Have I seen enough? Or are we just playing it out? Whatever, we'll just play it out. But, like, this deck is... I, I really dislike the decks... I really dislike facing the decks with just extreme inevitability. Like, yes, you have the loop where we can just never... never outgrind you unless the stars align. I understand that. To me, that's less interesting magic than... Uh, let's say, green-black rock versus Jeskai control, where both decks have enough early interaction to be reasonably good against the broad meta, and neither has just this sort of, like, extreme inevitability. There is a degree of inevitability, and you have an advantage in the late game, but it's not just like, okay... You need hate pieces to disrupt the infinite loop of buying back the lands with Ren and Six, like, and the lands kill you, <laughs> or kill lands, or whatever. Uh, not not a fan, but anyway, looks like we're pretty well beaten here. It, it has been well played by the opponent. Lightning Bolt kill, sure, why not? So, pretty, pretty rough looking one. Um, I guess we want the Spell Bombs for Graveyard Hate. Normally against a Jun deck, Fulminator Mage looks good, but here I don't know if that plays into their hands. Um, I guess most of the things I saw were taking it back to hand. They do it, the Graftigger's Cage shuts off looting, but that's kind of whatever. Um, they don't look, they're not playing that many creatures. That's like a pure control deck, like a that's that yeah that's basically a control deck so again against those colors i'm used to wanting kalidus but i don't know if he's really any good lily the last hope seems fine doesn't look like we want plague engineer i don't know how deep we want to go on the graveyard hate with stuff like surgical extraction i just don't know So, 
the only cards I'm fully sold on are Spell Bombs and Last Hope. Let's see what we don't like. Uh, I think most of our discard is good. Fatal Push might be pretty bad. It kills a Raging Ravine, but by the time they're activating Ravine, maybe they have the ability to buy back lands. We just don't... Like, if they're in a position where they're activating Ravine, we're probably pretty far behind anyway, right? It's not completely true, but... And the only other push target we saw was Indestructible, Hazaret. So... Honestly, most of our deck seems fine. I'm just worried about Bob getting absolutely blown out by Renin 6. But... I don't know if that means we're supposed to cut Bob's. Maybe we won't on the play. I think this looks like a fine setup on the play. And then we'll see more of their deck and take it from there. But, yeah, looks like a tough matchup, guys. Looks like a tough one. Again, we're going to run into decks like this that hopefully won't catch hold in the meta. But we're going to run into them uh, when new sets come out. That is for sure. And uh, the hand's fine. We'll keep it. And just because of the stupid Renin 6, we're probably priced into playing Goyf on turn 2 rather than Bob, even though Bob on turn 2 is just so much better, uh, especially against, especially when the Goyf might die to Bolt. But if they loot heavily enough, Goyf might not die to Bolt, so there's that. Let's see what they do. Okay, Life from the Loam... Yeah. All right, well, Grim Flayer is an okay draw. Let's just play that. Really would have been, like, just as fine with playing the... playing the Goyf there and having drawn a third land. So I know I could go Liliana on curve, but we can still hit it. We could still hit the black untapped land. Lightning Bolt for the tracker, as expected, Raven's Crime. All right, I'm uh, Thinking about pitching Bob, because I'm living in fear of running six, but it might be correct to make them have it at some point. So, let's just pitch Collective Brutality, I guess. Hissing Quagmire. Well, well, well. No Lily on curve for us. That's pretty okay. We'll play the Goyf. We hope they don't have a Lily of the Veil, right? At least we can kill her with the treetop if they do, but that'd still be pretty annoying. I, uh, I can only imagine that they do. Our opponents just kind of have everything today except for that burn player. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Thought Seize is a suitably awkward draw. I think we're just getting the Lily off the field. We could actually maybe have given a little more thought to Thought Seize into Dark Confidant, but... I just don't really want to lose anything else out of my hand to another Liliana, to a Lily plus one. They're going to get value out of their plus one, right? So, they cast a life from the loan, buy back a bunch of lands, and I guess now it's going to be thought season to Bob time, I assume. Wow. I say a bunch of lands, they only, only bought back that. Huntmaster, Liliana, Lightning Bolt. What a hand. What a hand. I think we have to take the Huntmaster and plant a trophy there, Lily, and still don't have an answer to their Lightning Bolt for our Bob, but then maybe we go on our own Lily plan. I don't know. A little hard to say. But maybe if they play Lily here, we'll just pitch our own Bob to it and then trophy there, Lily. Try to make this a Liliana game that we win. They're just bolting us. Okay. That's a clear signal that they plan to try to empty their hand with Liliana. So, sure. They 
They play Swamp. Okay, they're going to play the Lily, Tick Up, Pitch, Bloodstained Mire here. Or cast a Life from the Loam first. Ruination Rider? What did I miss? Whatever, we will not worry about it right now, but did I, I guess I missed something in their hand. That's bizarre. Oh, yeah, well, whatever. They get, yeah, they get to do this. So, plan is still as, as, can, as follows. We trophy the Lily. Only difference is we now have to edict them away with our Liliana next turn, but that's fine. Happy that we're able to. Okay, Hissing Quagmire is actually an okay draw, considering the circumstances. Alright, so we are actually quite far ahead. Uh, now they get to ping the Lily here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, just... These types of decks just outvalue a deck like ours so hard. And again, I, I don't know really how they how they will fare against the hyperlinear decks of the format, but you, we still have all the utility in our land base, and it's a top deck war. They've got some more consistency tools than us, though, and here's one of them looting out of the graveyard. Worm Harvest. Create a 1-1 one, one black and green worm creature token for each land card in your graveyard and Molten Vortex. Discard a land card it deals 2 to any target. Alright, well. It's actually really tempting to simply attack with the treetop here, but I am gonna I am gonna get on the Lily plan. I mean, interesting deck from the opponent. I'm really, really not trying to talk it down. Really not Hayden, but it's just a little bit rough to see these types of decks that just bully are so hard, you know? Especially when we've had some, some bad luck already. And especially when we think a deck like this might be a flash in the pan in the meta. It's like, all right, you get your wins against the, the fair decks, and then what? <laughs> so anyway... Molten Vortex taking down Liliana, life from the loam value. And we draw a land. Pretty poor. Especially because these Vortex activations can hit our Hissing Quagmires. So, again, it's just like the inevitability. It's like, okay, can I disrupt your literally infinite shocks? Like... You've got Life from the Loam, you've got... Yeah, you've got that synergy. Or are you just going to be able to outrace me? Like, that could be a thing, too. So... A type, style of gameplay I'm not in favor of. But enough complaining out of me. At least we're seeing, uh, we're seeing the new tech and we're seeing a lot of new spice from the opposition. And even if we do end up losing here, we're still live to get a partial Riku of our league entry because they did restructure that. You're no longer playing for nothing with a 2-3 and three in a league, so that's cool. That's a thing. But, alright, they dragged life from the loam, they cast it. They play a GQ, because I guess that's better than... Oh, what did... What else is there? Worm Harvest. Retracing Worm Harvest. And we draw Nile Spellbomb. Right in the nick of time. <laughs> Literally any turn before this, this would have been a blowout. Any turn before this. Absolute blowout. But it's still good now. Just, uh, they made all their worms first. Okay. Tarmogoyf. Pretty fine draw. Alright. 
our position's interesting, though. It's interesting. I don't know if it's good. They're just going to immediately GQ our village. You got it. Must mean they have a way to buy this land back, maybe? Or, who knows? On Earth. Sweet. Alright, let's attack with the Goyf, then we're going to maybe just unearth another Goyf. Okay, a chump is fine here because it means we're live to just kind of fight through their worms. And I, I mean, we have delirium. But I think just getting another goif is probably correct because, like, Flare can die to a chump lock plus a lightning bolt or, like, two activations of Molten Vortex, whereas the goifs are just gigantic at this stage. All right, Nile Spellbomb gave us a lifeline, so I'm happy about that. Enough to force the scoop? Sweet. Well, all hope did look lost there, I'm not going to lie. Um, we've seen Worm Harvest. We've seen Raven's Crime, Faithless Looting. Don't know if there's anything else. Do we want Graft Digger's Cage to stop Retrace? Maybe on the draw, we're... I mean, for Dark Confidant, we, we can pretty clearly cut a bob against the Lightning Bolt run in 6 deck, especially on the draw, so sure, why not? We can play a Cage. Seems reasonable. Still don't think we want Fulminator Mage. They look like they're on a very high land count anyway, so we're not going to land screw them. Um, still am not seeing all that many use cases for Kalidus. Like, he's just like a value piece... He's, he's an okay value piece. Still not certain about Surgical either. Don't want Fatal Push any more than I did before. Still really want, like, everything in our 2-drop category. I guess including Collective Brutality, it can kill that 2-2. It takes spells out of their hand. How good is Liliana of the Veil even against this deck? She she seems a little medium. I think we can trim one of her on the draw as well. All right, let's do this. We're going to cut a Collective Brutality and a Lily and a Bob. We're trimming around the edges of our less effective technology. And we're going to bring in one Surgical, not two, because it's still kind of a value game. And we'll play Kalidus as well. Kalidus is just like a reasonably sized body, I guess, that survives Lightning Bolt. Seems okay. Doesn't seem great. Seems okay. Alright. Well, we are... Again, I think this is a bad matchup from what I can tell, and we are taking them to game three, so that's cool. Uh, hand is fine. Yeah, hand, hand seems fine. Seems pretty good, actually. Opponent mauls. Nice. Keep... Okay, I was going to say, I can't see their deck mulling that low. They're probably going to stay at 6, and indeed they do. Scry goes to the top. Blood Crypt, shocking. Here comes a Thought Seize or Inquisition. Never mind, I'm wrong. Molten Vortex. Yikes. Okay. Um, discard makes me want to play my Inquisition and then Thought Seize next turn. Raven's Crime is the only take, and of course they can retrace that. Well, that's a bit annoying, but at least we have a free pitch of, a, of our now probably dead Thoughtseize. Obviously, they could top deck some higher curve stuff that we could nab with the Thoughtseize, but if they just choose to retrace the Raven's Crime here, we probably should pitch our Thoughtseize. And if they're pitching to retrace they're not pitching to the vortex so yeah let's do that and we draw an untapped land but it doesn't make green sad days so our hands good but slow and 
not really getting any quicker, is it? But opponent goes with a blast zone. Hmm. All right, so what are our options? We can go Bob, Quagmire, Pass, and then it dies either to Blast Zone or to a Molten Vortex discard. We can go Goyf, Quagmire, Pass, and then it's going to die to Blast Zone. If they have a fourth untapped land. Alternatively, we could simply play Field of Ruin and Pass and use it on their Blast Zone, and then uh, next turn go Tracker into land. Take it from there. Finally, we could uh, pulse the Molten Vortex. Very interesting turn, my friends. Very interesting turn. And it's an important one. Um, very important... I think I like Field of Ruin Pass. Like... You could, you could really make a case for any of the above, right? Absolutely any of the above options. There are four of them that I just laid out. But I think because they mulliganed and because they don't have their graveyard engine going, there is a tension between making land drops and, you know... Well, speak of the devil, there's their engine. Life from the loan, buying back a card. Alright, we're still going to hit the blast zone here. We just gotta use our mana. And it resets the blast zone. Alright, so... Um, now that we have another land, I think we're going to take it a little slower and try to really lean on our tracker. So, therefore, we're just going to pulse the Molten Vortex here. Even though... Yeah, I mean... It's a little bad, because now they get to shock us for basically free. Like, they'll pitch that Forgotten Cave and then they are going to drag you life from the loam next turn. No, they didn't do that. Interesting. Okay. Wouldn't have been a big deal anyway. Would have just been giving them basically a free shock, but now they're choosing to cycle instead. Fair enough. They just want the redraw. And the bolt. They're very aggressive with these bolts, but to be fair, we're kind of sequencing around them relatively carefully, I guess, so... Oh boy, yikes, Hazaret. Come on, Hazaret. Come on, guy, come on, guy. Indestructible haste, Monosync. Just, ah, uh, I hate these decks <laughs> that are just so good against us. What more can I say? What more can I say? All right, Tracker. Into land So, cracking a clue here makes it a 4-3. We'd need to then... Just sink an unrealistic amount of mana into it. Is there any way we can grow the Tarmogoyf? Land, instant, sorcery... What else is in the graveyard? Land, instant, sorcery... What am I missing? Enchantment. Okay, so if we put a creature in the yard, our Goyf actually outsizes the Hazaret. So let's play Bob. Let's play Bob. We can chump with Bob. It'll be annoying if we lose our tracker to another Molten Vortex or like a, a Bolt or something, but... <sighs> we were in like a real interesting position and then freaking Hazaret showed up. 
Another argument for just leaning so heavily on Tracker was to, wow, more lands in the graveyard, Ghost Quarter themselves, was to have another chance of finding Liliana. Well, they got a Lily of their own. Marvelous. Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. All right, maybe we, oh, they're discarding. Sure, picture land. And we're still on the chump plan. Trophy. All right, we'll crack a clue. Liliana the Last Hope is nice. But I really wish I drew a Lily of the Veil, can you imagine? Can you imagine drawing Lily of the Veil here? That's all I want. Well, we get to attack their Lily off the field. And we get to play our Tarmogoyf, which, as things stand, does brick wall the Hazaret, but... Hazaret's still really going to extend the game and let them get back into it, maybe. I mean, right now they're totally out of resources. They take their natural draw, no life from the loam dredge action. So we w really want to fade another Liliana of the Veil. Also want to fade, a, like any Planeswalker, obviously Planeswalkers, as I've been ranting about, are pretty good against us. Oh, they, uh... Interesting. They drew a life from the loam for a turn, I guess. Okay. Um, well, time to start cracking some clues. Let's find a veil. Let's find a lily veil, please. We can do it. Hmm. Ah, uh, no need to hit the Raging Ravine anytime yet, so... Okay, another land is not the very best. Uh, and buying back Bob doesn't really accomplish anything, does it? Like, what's better here? This thing's just an indestructible blocker anyway. Yeah, maybe we do like the Bob. So let's mill and then Bob is a floor, but maybe we'll find something better. Okay, it's the Bob. We mill over forest and cage. I'm not really heartbroken about any of that. We might need to save our Field of Ruin for a blast zone anyway. You know, if this game gets real grindy. <clears throat> so end step, they get their cycle. It's a nice synergy between... Loam and the Cycling Lands. The Cycling Lands, I think, are really what make this deck possible. And I will give our opponent all the credit in the world for the Onslaught art here. Well done. Well done. I like the new art, but the Onslaught bordering is where it's at. Interestingly, the opponent is on such a low land count right now that they... It's possible, I guess, that they could have Hazaret, but just kind of stuck, but no, they don't. They have Inquisition. That's not, that's whatever. Who cares? Who cares at this point? Our trophy's not doing much. Our Bob is whatever. Okay, they take trophy. Oh, because they have Renin 6. Oh my god, and that ping, ugh. I'm just disgusted. <laughs> I'm just so disgusted, my friends. <sighs> that's all right. Spellbomb's a great draw. Spellbomb is our friend. Alright, so I think we're just playing both Bobs. One will die to the Renin 6 ping. And then we'll hopefully untap with the other one. 
Oh, man, we're not getting off easy in any of these matchups. So I guess Burn was decided relatively quickly, but, like, these grind fests, I, I realize this might be a little hypocritical of me, right? But I just... Ooh, they're pinging us? Wow. I don't know what that means. It doesn't probably mean anything good. Un it means they have another NN6. Holy crap. That's annoying. They ping us again? They're not pinging the Bob? They're just counting on the Bob triggers to kill us. Well, maybe that'll happen. Maybe that's just correct. I don't know. Be merciful, Bob. There's a land. There's an Inquisition. Well, Inquisition's bad, but at least it's not... At least it hasn't really... Uh, Bob hasn't wrecked us yet, right? So, we'll crack a clue. Can we find a Liliana of the Veil finally, please? Another Dark Confidant. What is up? What is up <laughs> with this? All right, so Bob is a liability at this point. All right, we have another shot at just finding a Liliana here, so we'll take it. Abrupt Decay. Do we care about Abrupt Decay on the Renin 6? I mean, it's a good failsafe. But it's just time to start attacking here. So what I'm going to do is send one Bob at Renin 6 in these other, the bigger things at face. <clears throat> yeah, let's do it like that. All right, they just block the biggest thing. They're going to lose their walker. And that means we get to just play another Tarmogoyf, and we should obviously have lethal next turn. And we just want to fade, like, literal Lightning Bolt, because Lightning Bolt to the face gives us the biggest chance of dying to our own Dark Confidant triggers. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. Trophy the Tracker. Well, that's pretty good, too. That's pretty good, too, not gonna lie. So, we don't have lethal any longer. Unless we draw Lily of the Veil. Field of Ruin, okay, painless. Kalidus, painful. Liliana, yes, Liliana. Woo-hoo. All right. So, yeah, we just have lethal. I was going to say, do we play Kalidas first? Do we fire up Manlands? We just have lethal. Good game, well played. Good game, well played. Right? Ah, GG. Yep. Yeah, those were certainly some good games the opponent says. Yeah, very true. I, I never wanted to imply otherwise with my with my ranting earlier. I just, you know, it just feels, uh, well, let's try to commiserate with the opponent a little bit more before I, I go back on my rant about my rant. Absolutely. Okay, they're gone anyway. Um, yeah, so here's here's why I... I kind of got a little tilted there. Eh, I don't think I really tilted, but here's why I was ranting. I feel like we're already the good guys of modern, right? We're the fairest deck and the fairest like good deck in modern, and it feels like we're being punished for the decision to play fair when we run into decks like that. And we'll keep this hand. That's kind of a feature 
that happens a lot with like kind of low tier decks or brews or stuff like the that stuff ends up and i'm not saying that's what the opponent's deck is for all i know loam is now like a tier deck we'll have to see how the format shakes out but those kind of you know brewy border on on janky things they often end up being pretty good against mid-range. So we're already the good guys of the format, then we get punished for being the good guys by running into decks like that. It's sometimes a little much, my friends. But that's all right. We scraped out the win. And uh, we are against, I guess, Absin Zoo, if I, had to, if I had to say. And it's fully foiled out. So they've got the turn one Narnum Renegade. And they've also got a couple of trophies. The trophies are annoying, but I think we can live with them. So I'm going to take the knight. Like, the trophy is going to answer our Bob, but Bob is of questionable value against a zoo deck anyway, especially because we've already thought seized. So we just take the highest power card. We could also draw into more discard, which incentivizes us to... Uh, Ooh, interesting. No Narnum Renegade, which incentivizes us to leave the more reactive spells in hand. Uh, but we didn't. We just hit another land, so Bob it is. Trophy the Bob, fine with me. Don't do it. Honestly, potentially pretty decent, considering the fact that we're, we're well equipped against a uh, fast start. And yeah, sure enough, they got the, uh, they got the trophy for us. Well... Hopefully we draw a tireless tracker to punish that hard. That is the that is the hope. Inquisition of Kozilek is most certainly not tracker, but it's an alright one. They've got a bob of their own and a trophy and a renegade. Right now we have answers to both of their permanents. But right now the trophy also rots in hand. So it's a question of do we... Like, leaving the trophy in hand is better if we're going to draw more discard, but it's worse if we're hoping to draw a threat of our own and stick it. Then again, they're clearly, like a, again, like an aggressive deck, I think. But they're pretty reactive for an aggressive deck. But Narnum Renegade says aggression to me. So I don't know. It's a tough call. I'm going to leave the reactive card in their hand. I'm going to take a threat, even though we have an answer to it in hand. They go get a Godless Shrine, they play the Renegade. And we have enough incentives to just untap here. Like, yeah, we just have a lot of incentives to do so. We could draw Lily of the Veil. We could draw Scoos. All right. Hmm. Yeah, you know, as good as Scooz is, I'm pretty fine trading it with a known trophy after it gains me a couple points of life. All right, so a very interactive game, very back and forth. Whoever gets their recurring value going first is going to be favored, obviously, and it looks like we're a deck that really has the edge there, all right? Like, they're playing cards like Narnum Renegade. You know, find value for the cost, but... Wow, and no trophy on our ooze, so... We get to get even more value out of it. We might not connect here, but... We'll eat the Renegade. And probably eat the Marsh Flat. Wow. I'm not going to eat here because that might incentivize them to trophy. I don't know why. Yeah, they have another trophy, don't they? Whatever, we'll find out. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little confused, but 
There's the GQ, yes. Main phasing it against our tapped man land. You got it. I'm also... Oh, to enable Renegade. Sure. I'm also definitely just eating all of their lands, I think, with, with the Scoos here as well. Because they do play Knight of the Reliquary, and that matters. I really don't know why they're letting us keep the scoos around this long, but maybe they're just trying to save their trophy for something they think is more impactful, but I would say this has had plenty of impact already. Another abrupt decay. All right, well, we're going to snap off this one. And now I bet they trophy us. No, no trophy in response. All right. Am I just wrong? Do they just not have a trophy in hand? Okay, now they're going to. Well, now I get to gain yet another point of life. And I guess because we're on an, we're on Unearth, we should leave our Bob around. I think this Goose has uh, served its purpose. <sighs> Getting us like a, a 12 for 1 if you count like each land and creature out of their yard and each point of life gained, plus the hits. You know, obviously it's not quite that, it's not quite exactly that way, but. Gifted Aetherborn. You got it. Cool card, but not one we care much about because we're drawing answers. But we really want to draw. We, we look like we have so many more X for ones in our deck than they do. They're on stuff like Aetherborn and. Uh. Renegade. Like, it's it's a more zoo, zoo-y. We're mid-range, so show us the mid-range value cards. Thought sees and doesn't count, but we're going to cast it. <laughs> we get an EE -E out of their hands. Sure, I mean, that's fine. They've got GQ in hand. They're sandbagging it. And that's all. So, very grindy game. It should be only a matter of time before we draw, like, a Planeswalker or a Tireless Tracker. That's really all we need to take this game over. There's the GQ. Nurturing Peatland, sure. Just gonna crack that immediately. Good value play. Out of our land base, and we find another land. Ugh. Well, we're giving the opponent every opportunity to get into a game that they really probably have no business being in, given how the early game played out. Muda Vault. Well, that's a good Field of Ruin target. No reason to do it right this second, though. Again, we hope for a tracker so we can get value off of some of this stuff. Tarmogoyf's a fine draw. We'll play it. We're sandbagging an overgrown tomb for all the usual reasons, and we'll pass. They play Path in this deck, too, huh? Okay. We're out of basics. Muta Vaults. Well. We don't get our basic here, but... Still fine to answer a land with a land. But we, we really just have to start drawing our X for ones at some point. <laughs> we just have to. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, 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 GQ. Stone raining us. Wastelanding us, whatever it is. No. 
annoying, but we have obviously enough lands to operate. Tracker. Tracker. Oh my god, a fetch land? Are you kidding? Alright. Uh, we have one overgrown tomb left in the deck. So I guess I'm going to run this out and get the tomb out before I draw that too. <laughs> Unbelievable. But again, I despite this, our position is still fine. I'm just going to be very annoyed if we let this game slip because we just do nothing but flood. All right. Overgrown tomb. Get out of the deck. Tracker. Tracker, tracker, tracker. Lily of the Veil. Vale, I will take it. I guess we're pitching a land and hanging on to this decay, just in case they have a creature for next turn, but... With our luck, we will probably draw a tracker now. Um, to be fair, the opponent's looking a little flooded themselves, right? And Liliana's gonna be awesome here. One imagines. They could have another trophy or decay. We've seen them so far. Just trophy, I guess. No decay. Collective Brutality. Uh, draining us and taking our decay away. Sure. Don't really care unless their last card is an answer to Lily. It's a Narnum Renegade. That's not an answer to Lily. We can edict you away, my friend. I called it, didn't I? Tracker right after the flood. But it's still pretty good. Still really good. So I'm not mad. I'm just pointing it out. <laughs> oh man, hey, we're seeing all kinds of crazy decks. Alright, now we could draw land we don't as brutality. Sure, we'll just drain them back. Drain you right back. Take our Lily up, which admittedly is really nice to keep her around against a deck like this. And get busy with our Balduvian Barbarians. This has been a fun league. It really has, despite... Oh, they, oh, they answered the tracker before we hit a land, and now we draw a fetch land. Guys, my tilt... My tilt can't... <laughs> can't be contained anymore. There's no fetchables in the deck, so we might as well put that in our graveyard. Not that that matters either, but it's probably technically a more correct play than running it out. Now, maybe running it out was better is because we could crack it for revolt. They just... We're just trading brutalities, and, and I'm just finding trackers without lands. This is, this is a pretty miserable performance from both decks, I'm not going to lie. Both decks had good starts and then just petered out into absolutely nothing. They're fetching now. What does that mean? Oh, it means another revolt, sure. Okay, well, pretty clear push. Take up. Balduvian Barbarians attack. Okay, I mean, again, our position's fine. <laughs> but it's been such a such a haphazard progression. There's the concession. Alright, it's good enough. The Balduvian Barbarians are good enough. Really, Liliana is what won us that game, but who's counting? All right, so we're against what I would call Abzin Midrange Zoo. So it looks like it's trading away the X for one potential of things like Planeswalkers and Lingering Souls that you would and Tireless Tracker that you would normally see in Abzin, and instead it's playing more efficient threats like uh, Narnum Renegade and like Gifted Aetherborn and Knight of the Reliquary. So. It's kind of like, yeah, it's like, let's just call it abs and aggro, because it's like a meeting point between zoo and midrange, but maybe aggro implies it's not as interactive, whereas it actually is very interactive. So what do we like? Um, Spellbomb is okay against Knight of the Reliquary, might not be that necessary against what else we've seen in their deck. We definitely want the fourth Fatal Push. We definitely want, I, I think Plague Engineer seems good. Uh, Damnation... Liliana, The Last Hope, Kalidus all seem really good. Fulminator is not unreasonable, but their card quality is lower than ours. Like, when the card quality is equal in a mid-range mirror, Fulminator is sweet because, like, disrupting their mana, playing, making their Liliana the Veil's Life awkward is all really nice. I don't think I'm going to play Fulminator till I see more of their deck. Same with Spellbomb, so... 
let's keep those five in mind, but we're probably just bringing in these five great cards, cutting five less great ones. Uh, I'm pretty happy to move away from at least two Thought Seizes, maybe up to two more discard spells. Um, how good is Collective Brutality? Not very. Uh, like, a lot of their stuff is 2-3. So what if we do that? Um, obviously this can still hit their spells out of hand, but if we're treating this kind of like a mid-range mirror to some extent, what if we do that, and what if we cut a land? That actually seems like a really nice... Uh, yeah, seems like a really nice way to side. So I don't know what the correct land to cut from this setup is, but I'll just cut the Urborg. And I guess they're not that aggressive. I, I guess 4-Bob is still good. Let's do it. All right. We are live for the 3-2. and two. We've just got to win this game, or if there's a game 3, the next one. And the opponent mold, we've got Goyf and both Lilies. We'll keep. Turn 1, Narnum Renegade? Or discard? Well, it's not Narnum Renegade, because they got the Godless Shrine. White. Weathered Wayfarer. This card is so spicy. I love this card. And I immediately drew a Fatal Push, so that's very lucky. I love this card. Before I got... Like, so... I had a period of time... For those who don't know, for like 20 years, I played just on and off kitchen table magic with my friends, going all the way back to like third grade we started. We'd take a few years without playing, and then, oh boy, jeez, they kept the one-lander on the back of a renegade, yikes. Uh, yeah, we'll play Goyf here. Looks like we got this one wrapped up. Um, no, I shouldn't speak too soon, but anyway, looking good for us. Here comes a path, sure. So I played on and off kitchen table with my friends for 20 years. I eventually, like three years ago, made the jump into modern. But I spent a lot of time kind of not understanding just how powerful the modern format was, trying to make a lot of kitchen table decks work, trying to make a lot of white weenie decks work, because I've always liked that archetype. And Weathered Wayfarer was a one of in like every deck I made. This card is sweet. Absolutely love it. Um, but... We took care of it, <laughs> and now it's a Liliana time, which is obviously great against a Monoscrewed opponent. Uh, whatever, we'll pitch Tomb, play Marsh. Doesn't matter much. Okay, so if they've got a trophy... We might have a game, because they can answer the Lily and then get their two drops going. And that's indeed what's going on, so fair enough. A real game it is. We're obviously very ahead on, on resources, but our hand kind of sucks. Unearth. Uh, fine one in the matchup, but I think it's actually correct right here to just cycle it. Cycle it into a Tarmogoyf, which is a good play. I'm going to run out the field and we'll sandbag this fetch land for as long as we can afford to. If they have an answer for Goyf, I really hope it's not another path. I really hope it's something that puts it in the graveyard. Arena! Oh, the opponent's deck is so spicy. It's so incredibly spicy. Alright. Hit you with a 5-6. If we can. Trophy. Beautiful. That's just beautiful. We get it. Well, we're out of basics, but what can you do about that? Um, okay, so new plan is to once again get the last overgrown tomb, the last fetchable out of our, out of our deck. So I think it's actually correct to do that before we mill with Liliana. Uh, 
Uh, we get punished for this if we mill over like a tracker, but if you're not playing around one thing, you're playing around the other. Oh my god, wouldn't you know it? Oh, why do I say these things out loud? Uh, we are just going to sandbag that tracker because we've got a land in hand, I guess. And that also lets us hold up Field of Ruin, which could either take them off of white or black, or just off of Arena. Dark Confidant, sure. That's very bad against us. And I'm not going to activate Field because I don't want to give them any colored mana. That's very bad against a Liliana the Last Hope. So... Uh, Inquisition is actually a pretty good draw here. Knight and Narnum Renegade will take the Knight. Kill the Bob. Play the Tracker. Make a clue. Living the dream over here, my friends. Living the absolute dream. That's a concession from the opponent. All right. So we had our rough spots in this league. We had our rough spots and no mistake. Dropping both post-side games against Dredge feels really bad, because I think that matchup is fine, games two and three. Game one is the tough one, right? Game one is the real tough one, and we stomped him game one. Uh, but we just kind of fell apart game two, and also continued falling apart game three. Just couldn't find the graveyard hate and took some mulligans while the opponent kept seven both games. We also um, lost to that kind of were prison Tezzeret variant, which just has all the value in the world against us. Like, they've replaced some of the stuff we answer well with some of the stuff that we don't answer well. Like, they've replaced the Wurrs and some of the techie artifacts, it seems, with Tezzerets and Damnations. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good against us. So, uh, that those matchups felt tough. I think Dredge is still fine, but you know, Dredge will beat you some of the time, even with a lot of Grave 8, and that happened to us here. So, tough breaks, but you know what? We we kind of stomped that deck in round 5, which admittedly looks more like a brew, not not particularly something that lines up well against us. I don't know what it would line up well against. Obviously, it's got a more proactive clock, but yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure it's got its good matchups, but it seemed like a pretty nice one for us. And then we continue to beat Burn. I think I'm like 12-1 and 1 against Burn in leagues on this channel. Like, it's just it's just a matchup I don't <laughs> really need to dedicate slots to, although admittedly having main deck collective brutality was really nice for running into Burn. And then what made this league a success is the fact that we outground that Jund Loam deck. So, um, yeah, I think... Even though this was only a 3-2, and two, this was actually a really, really cool debut league for Modern Horizons because, hey, 3-2, and two, let's not knock it. That's still a positive record. That's still a fine, fine result. You can never really be mad about a 3-2. and two. And we saw the Plague Engineer, who admittedly didn't do, didn't like hose anybody. We weren't against matchups where he was absolutely like an awesome, awesome card. But, and we didn't see him against Dredge where he could have made a difference. But uh, against Burn, uh, it did hit the field and it forced them to Helix the Engineer, which not only is great in general if Burn has to point spells at the board rather than your face, it also allowed us to use our other new tech of Unearth to buy back a Skuz and totally take over the game. So, New tech showing up all over the place, on Earth in general. Uh, probably the MVP of this league, right? Like, it was never bad when we saw it. Like, it was usually really, really good when we saw it. And, like, the one time it wasn't, we just cycled it away and hit something good with it. So that was awesome. Uh, Collector Oof was potentially a good role player against that... Uh, that Tezzeret deck, but they just had they just had the perfect curve out. Like we didn't disrupt well enough to let Oof really shine. And uh at the end of the day it was just kind of a two two that was shutting off maybe a thing or two in their hand and then they just played Tezzerets and we lost. So uh <laughs> Collector Oof obviously better against the real were present prison deck, or I guess the more traditional were present de prison deck. Better against Affinity, better against uh Hardened Scales against Tron. That's why he's here. And a lot of people are saying to play two. You know, I think playing two is fine, but I also don't think I'm wrong to start off by thinking maybe one is the sweet spot. Because, you know, how common are those matchups really, and how terrible are they for us? I don't really know. 
obviously there's a lot of flexibility in this deck. You can do whatever you want, but I think, uh, yeah, Oof was fine. It was cool that we saw him in the opening hand against the match where we brought him in. He just, we just didn't have enough to, to make it work. Um, and, of course, the other piece of new technology was nurturing Peatland. And, hey, we beat Burn with Peatland in our deck, and it didn't hurt us anywhere else. Uh, it would have been, like, the matches we lost were mostly due to flooding. And if we had happened to draw the Peatland instead of non-Peatland lands, well we could have even gotten out of the floods, right? So, uh, Peatland was awesome where it was awesome, you know, just cashing in for a new card, you can't argue with that. So, guys, even though it's a 3-2, and two, I am calling this a success. This was a really nice run out for our new technology, and I had a lot of fun. Um, and of course, I hope you did too, so let me know what you th thought about everything as always. Let me know what you want to see me play next. I'm at, I'm at your mercy, especially if you're a Patreon supporter. I do what you want, right? Basically, that's how it goes. So you want to see me keep iterating with this list? Do you want to see me keep playing uh, the stock list that I ran, that I had first in my most recent video? Uh, the one that, that maybe doesn't play the main deck brutalities? I don't know. We'll, I'll take all feedback into account and we'll see what we're doing. But one thing I can tell you, my friends, we are going to play... Nose to the grindstone, lots of green black rock in modern over the next couple months. We've got a lot of great new tech, and I think the, the first signs here that we saw today were very, very promising. So remember, if you are enjoying this content, Patreon is the very best way you can support it. I have very limited time, honestly, a lot, a significant amount of my free time these days goes to this channel. Um, I am a, a working father. I've got a lot of familial and job-related and social obligations as well, and I, you know, do have other hobbies, you know, that I don't have much time for them, but, you know, I like to try to stay fit and all that stuff, so anyway, the more you support me, the more time I can carve out of my day to bring you this content, so Patreon, there are two rewards for supporting, uh, all the way down at the lowest level of entry, you get access to my monthly scouting reports, and all the way up at the highest level, you get one-on-one -on -one coaching on a basically unlimited basis. It's kind of like a permanent, we just keep a running conversation going. So if you are enjoying this content, please consider joining me on Patreon, joining all of us. We have over 50 Patreon supporters now. I love you all. Couldn't do it without you. So amazing. And uh, you remember, you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can like, you can share, you can comment. And I look forward to reading and replying to your comments. So uh, thanks for joining me here. I hope you had fun. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead and we'll be playing more leagues sometime soon. So stay tuned.